So we'll just chant Mangala Charan prayers and then we'll start. Om Agyanti Mirandhasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bhishtam Sthapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swapadantikam Vandeham Shri Gurao Shri Yutapadakamalam Shri Gurun Vaishnavamsya Sri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Raghunathan Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Sri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Sri Vishakha Vitamscha He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostute Tapte Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Brinda Vaneshwari Vishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vancha Kalpatarubhyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhaivcha Patita Nam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnave Bhyo Namo Namaha Namam Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishthaya Bhutale Shrimate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Iti Namine Namaste Saraswate Deve Gauruvani Pricharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Pashadei Shatarine Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhara Shri Vasadi Gauru Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare 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 Krishna, so we welcome all of you to third chapter of Bhagavad Gita, which is Karma Yoga. So, most of the time, you know, when we ask people, what do you know about Bhagavad Gita? They say, karma kiye ja, phal ki chinta mat kar, you know, sab kuye karma kiye ja. When you go to these shops, you know, uh, they have that calendar, karma hi puja hai. So, but talk about like karma, karma is like, you can take mic and speak, yeah. Okay. Yes. On the dais. Hare Krishna. I Hare was saying Krishna. that even for non-Indians, the karma is a big word. They'll just keep saying karma is coming back to you, karma calling, karma, ah, you karma. know, a lot of like karma yeah. words. Even in Western world also, the karma is a very fancy word. Very huh? fancy word. It's yeah. your karma. <laughs> we have heard in the offices, you know, mostly Westerners are also very frequently using this. Um, so, so let us understand from the perspective of Bhagavad Gita because a lot of people have different meanings. But what Krishna is saying, let us hear. For example, if you have to take admission in a college after you uh, pass out of your school, then is it okay to ask a panwala like, which college is good outside the college? Is, it, is he the right person, like a shopkeeper outside the college or should you go to someone who is a professor or who, who understands the cons and pros of different colleges, right? So similarly, everyone in this world has different opinion about everything. But what exactly is the opinion, what is coming from the authoritative source is very important to understand. So we'll understand from the lotus mouth of Sri Krishna, Krishna Bhagavan, uh, Swayam Krishna Ishwara Parama Krishna, that what is karma? What is karma yoga? So in the second chapter, we discussed about the contents of the Gita summarized and the acronyms were Gita. Can you tell what is G stand for in Gita? Guru, very good. I, identity, identity. T, two dharmas, two dharmas, spiritual dharma and material dharma. And A, last time Prabhu took, Ram Vilas Prabhu took up for A. You were there last week? Atma Ram, Stiti Pragya, right? Atma Ram, who is self-satisfied. 
so we discussed about that where krishna talked about karma yoga you know gyan yoga and bhakti yoga now in third chapter it is described in more detail about karma yoga so for this the acronym acronym is tree and t stands for tyaga renunciation or work which is better so in the aprabhu so in the second chapter we saw that uh, <coughs> krishna is telling arjuna that you should stay away from abominable work <coughs> abominable work so arjuna understood that krishna is wanting him not to fight this battle and therefore he asked this question that my dear krishna should i work or should i just renounce and leave everything because he arjuna misunderstood that krishna is saying that you should keep away from some such kind of abominable work and this fighting is abominable because so many people will die so i should not fight and i should just renounce so now this question comes which is better so this is the first uh verse that he is uh, asking in the first verse of the third chapter and then second is the rungs of yoga yoga ladder are and then e exemplary karma yogis e enemy of the soul so we'll go in detail so let's go to the first one so arjuna's confusion is renunciation or action so this chapter is divided into you know these four different parts where krishna tells that renunciation is difficult so prescribed action with detachment which is nishkam karma is far better for arjuna one should go from karma kanda to karma yoga so we will understand these uh, definition in more detail as we go on so krishna is telling in short that renunciation prematurely is not good you know if you renounce everything prematurely without doing your duties then uh, you may end up um, committing sinful activities which is not good and then in the second part uh, from ch- ch- uh, text 17 to 35 uh, it is said that even if arjuna is qualified for renunciation he should still do nishkam karma yoga to set the right example so just to give quick example of what is nishkam karma yoga nishkam karma yoga is when you do any karma without expectation of results and you surrender to krishna you know so so why should we do that to set an example because even krishna although he doesn't has to do anything he is still performing the activities great people are doing activities just to set an example even though they do not need to do that kind of work and then fourth part is about lust so even if you do any kind of karma there is a there is a tendency that you might be faced with uh, lust so lust uh, basically means something which is when you get attached to something Uh, too much then it can cause your fall down and uh, so how to conquer that lust is explained here so we'll now go into detail so these three sections are there about uh, doing karma and then nishkam karma and then you know setting example and then uh, controlling lust so that these are the three different parts so here in this uh, text krishna tells there are two kinds of people gyana yogis who renounce the work and karmi yogis who do prescribed work so <clears throat> gyana yogis think that oh, i have acquired knowledge that is the end i do not to do any work right so they renounce everything and karma yogis they do prescribed work so when we talk about karma it can mean action right and it can mean fruit of action it can means destiny also so there are different meanings of karma that are defined and uh, whatever our role is so you are say a householder you are working job there are kids somebody is you know a brahmachari or a vanaprastha so there are different varnas in society and different ashrams also grahastha vanaprastha so everybody has different activities a brahmin you know does six different activities what are those six things that brahmins do yajan yajan pathan pathan dana pratigya so these are different things they do and then chatriya they have different responsibilities administration taking care of everybody 
and then uh, Vaishyas, they are mercantile class, you know, they do uh, cow farming, cow is like a mother and bull is like a father, so plowing the land and uh, trading, all those things are Vaishyas business. And then Shudras, they support all the above classes, you know, so like army, foot soldiers on, in the army or, you know, somebody who's supporting. So it's not that one is better than the other, it's all created by Krishna and based on your actions, guna and karma, you are categorized into different activities. And whatever role we have in the society, if we perform that duty nicely, we can purify our hearts, we can elevate our consciousness. Right? So if a, if a, say a wife, she is taking good care of the kids, she is taking, you know, uh, good care of the husband, uh, cooking nice food and whatever her duties are, she is doing, then obviously she will get purified by those activities. And men, they are going out, they are doing their job, they are doing their duties, earning money, and at the same time keeping Krishna in the center, you know, offering food to Krishna, chanting the name of Krishna, remembering Krishna always. So all these activities will actually purify us. And even though there may be difficulties in any uh, varna or ashram, all these difficulties only have one purpose. Because difficulties will come in everybody's life, whoever we are, wherever we are. <laughs> how much money we have in our bank, we will have difficulties. And that one purpose of all these difficulties is to bring us closer to Krishna. To realize that this is not the place for us. You know, uh, We are the eternal soul, we are part and parcel of Krishna. All these difficulties are so that we can take shelter of Krishna, we can come closer to Krishna. So that is the whole and sole reason of this material world, of all these difficulties that we are facing. So many people think that uh, I am very elevated now and I don't need to do anything, I can renounce everything. Then they do all these things immaturely. <laughs> you see all these uh, playing soccer or whatever they are doing. So premature renunciation is discouraged. If a person with impure heart renounces prescribed activities, taking to Vedic karma sannyasa, he reverts to material action, for such a person cannot remain inactive. Because the nature of the soul, Atma, is to be always be active, you know. Yeah. I'm noticing like um, recently a lot of uh, monks, they are like early on they get, they become monks, but then um, because of this material world, they get back to this uh, society and create YouTube channels and you know promoting all that. So they, I feel like, at some point of time now they are kind of don't know what to do because they already have kind of you know renounce at that age and learned something, but then now they they are kind of you know Retreating, yeah. yeah. Going back to business world. Yeah. Going back to business world. So I don't know, like, um, yeah. you know, sometimes. Yeah, so that is premature renunciation and yeah. that causes uh, distrust in people, right? In, in uh, spiritualists. Mm -hmm. So inaction is unnatural, Krishna says, because the nature of the soul is always to be active. Although you do, don't need to do anything, you have enough, but still, you should uh, perform the right actions to set an example and to further uh, purify yourself and bring, bring closer to Krishna. So Nishkam Karma Yoga is better for Arjuna than Jnana Yoga. So what is Nishkam Karma Yoga? Nishkam Karma Yoga is uh, any karma which is without karma or which is without any uh, desire for fruitive results, any, any desire for result that, oh, I am doing this because of this. So that is Nishkam Karma. So do your prescribed duty, Nityam Karma, for it is better than <coughs> renunciation of action, Karma Sanyasa. But by performing actions, one may become bound up by those activities. So that is correct. Uh, when we perform anything, we may become bound up. But for example, a, a student says, oh, you know, I will, not, uh, I will not study. Krishna will take care of my results. I am totally dependent on Krishna. But God helps those who help themselves. 
So obviously we have to do our karma without expectation what will, whether it will be pass or fail, but we have to do our best. Um, and then when we work for Krishna, we avoid any bondage. Yajyan arthat karmano ananyatra loko ayam karma bandhana tad artham karma kaunteya mukta sangha samachara. So when we do for, uh, when we do yajya, then what happens? We are detached from karma. And uh, that brings about purification uh, for us. Uh, so there was a nice example of uh, a doctor. So one of the devotees went to a hospital and another devotee was admitted. He was sick. So he said, oh, thank you, Krishna. My friend is saved. And then the doctor said, no, I saved your friend. Where is Krishna here? I did the surgery. He is all right. And he said, yes, I, 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 all, I already I appreciate you that you actually treated him. But it's also Krishna's mercy because he sanctioned it. That's why he's still alive. So the doctor was very adamant. He did not agree with him. He said, no, 100% credit goes to me. And then <laughs> this devotee, you know, he, he didn't want to argue. But then he said, OK, how many people die in your hospital every day? He said, many people die. And do you operate on them? He said, yes. And he said, then you are a murderer. You are responsible for that. <laughs> so he said, no, they are dying because God wants them to you know, die. <laughs> So, and there is similarly other, another doctor who said, you know, do your best and leave the rest to God. So that is the right understanding. So second is rungs of yoga ladder. So there are different uh, ladders of yoga. Uh, there are different rungs on this yoga ladder. So let us understand what are those. So T for Tyag or Renunciation, R for rungs of yoga ladder, right? So these are the different uh, rungs like it starts from animal life to karma kanda. Karma kanda is like when people do things, activities for growth of business, for getting a child, for getting a beautiful wife or spouse or whatever it is. And they also uh, worship the demigods also in those things. Especially in case of sakam karma, fruits of work, fame, wealth. And nishkam karma, they do not desire any fruits, they do it for the Lord. And jnana yoga, there is no work but accumulation of knowledge. Ashtang Yoga is mystic siddhis and Bhakti Yoga is what we are practicing that is on the highest uh, level of the yoga ladder. So, so these are an, again um, definition. So, Don't we think it's Yoga because we are, we are doing Nishkam Yes, we are doing Nishkam. So Bhakti Yoga includes everything. It includes Jnana Yoga, Nishkam Karma Yoga. Yeah, it includes everything. So, for example, in this, here it is said, animal life is unrestricted sense gratification, karma kanda is regulated, sakam karma, devotee with selfish desires, nishkama karma, no desires for personal interest. And then bhava bhakti, prema bhakti. So, this is uh, the yoga letter. So, when we do bhakti, basically it incorporates everything. Uh, because we are acquiring knowledge, jnana from Bhagavad Gita, we have jnana yoga, karma yoga, we are working for Krishna, you know, devotees are going to distribute books, they are cooking for Krishna. So much action is involved here. Right? So Jnana is there, Karma is there, Dhyana Yoga, when we chant, meditate, Dhyana Yoga is there. So everything is inclusive. For example, in $100, $10 is included, like that. So Bhakti Yoga is like an express elevator. If you have a 100 floor building, so express elevator, you can go very quickly. Uh, whereas in you know progressive and extended ladder there are different you have to go to different things so animal life surrender and association of pure devotees sadhana bhakti bhav bhakti prem bhakti so it is direct path so from karma kanda to karma yoga so karma kanda is is generally referred to something where someone is working for getting some fame wealth or acquisitions and all those things for the personal interest and uh, karma yoga is on a higher level without or nishkam karma yoga without desire for results and that is better now krishna is answering the question that arjuna had asked in the first verse that which is better renunciation of work or uh, chutai work so 
बुद्धि योगा और रिनंसिएशन सो नाउ कृष्णा इज टेलिंग इफ यू आर नॉट फ्री फ्रॉम डिजायर फॉर द रिजल्ट ऑफ एक्शन देन यू शुड स्टिल परफॉर्म एक्शन विद डिजायर कर्म कांडा रादर देन गिविंग अप एक्शन कंप्लीटली अगेन आई रीड इफ यू आर नॉट फ्री फ्रॉम डिजायर फॉर द रिजल्ट ऑफ एक्शन देन यू शुड स्टिल परफॉर्म एक्शन विद डिजायर रादर देन गिविंग अप एक्शन कंप्लीटली सो बेसिकली द आइडिया इज दैट वन मस्ट एक्ट वेदर यू हैव डिजायर्स इनिशियली यू मे हैव डिजायर्स यू नो ऑल ऑफ अस वी वी डू अ जॉब बिकॉज वी गेट अ पे चेक अदरवाइज वी वॉन्ट बी वर्किंग देर राइट बट अल्टीमेटली द थिंग इज वेन वी आर वर्किंग फॉर कृष्णा इट हैज टू बी विदाउट एनी न धनम न जनम चेतन महाप्रभु से न धनम न जनम न सुंदरिम कवितम व जगतीश काम है मम जन्मनी जन्मनीश्वरी भक्ता भक्ति माय डियर लॉर्ड आई डू नॉट वांट एनीथिंग आई जस्ट वांट योर डिवोशनल सर्विस लाइफ आफ्टर लाइफ सो दैट इज लविंग डिवोशनल सर्विस टू द लॉर्ड विदाउट एनी डिजायर फॉर रिजल्ट सो दिस इज अ वेरी ब्यूटिफुल चार्ट हाउ वी कैन मूव फ्रॉम कर्म कांडा टू कर्म योगा is supreme lord he has given the vedas you know all the different vedas and then in the vedas there are prescribed actions which are karma so there are three kinds of karma karma akarma and vikarma karma is action which we should do vikarma is bad actions which shouldn't be done or which is against the scriptural injunctions and akarma is which doesn't gives you any reaction which is done for the lord basically we don't get any reaction good or bad for that so prescribed action is karma which is as per the scriptural injunctions and what is the injunction it says sacrifice yagya so there are different definitions of yagya in this context the yagya is like the fire sacrifice it is said that the fire sacrifice is like a uh, the yagya kund is like the mouth of the lord and the fire is like the tongue and the lord eats whatever ahuti you give into the fire so sometimes people say oh, how is it possible how can the is lord eat through the you know fire and this so suppose the child gets hurt in the leg and they have like it's bleeding and the doctor <coughs> gives a medicine then <laughs> you may think oh i doctor i got hurt in my leg but you are giving medicine in the mouth how will it get cured but doctor said no you should have faith it will work right so these things have worked i actually i was traveling from my hometown to delhi from jhansi to delhi and i met one person he was a big big uh, agriculturist you know he had big lands and he do like rice uh, farming and everything harvesting so he told me that they spend like crores of rupees in doing yagya big big havan yagya just so that the rain is there because he had big lands he was a big like multi millionaire he said we do big yagya so that we get the rain at the right time right amount so that we can harvest the crop properly and make profit from that yeah they they do that's why they are doing it no does he get the rain then after yeah yeah definitely yes they do and then that's how and the scriptures also says that raining cloud is parjanya then it rains what happens with the rains you get the grains you eat the grains that what happens through the semen when you eat semen is generated through the semen another living entity takes birth right and the cycle repeats so it's so beautiful how the sun is evaporating leaving away the salt all the water forming the clouds right you cannot even touch the clouds it's there and then rain is forming the crops are growing and then people are eating semen and uh, generations are generated so so this whole cycle is so beautiful uh, and the sacrifice in kali yuga is chanting the holy name of krishna you know there are different names krishna has given nam nam akari bahudani je sarva shaktis krishna has given so many names govinda krishna gopala and there was a city in europe where it was not raining for many you know months everybody was so worried and then one of our सन्यासी सु शिला प्रभु पा डिसाइपल ही वेंट देर एंड सैड ओके विल डू संकीर्तन हरे कृष्णा कीर्तन विल डू सो दे डिड फॉर लाइक फ्यू डेज एंड एज सुन एज यू नो दे वर डूइंग आफ्टर फ्यू डेज इमिजिएटली देर वॉज रेन सो दिस संकीर्तन यज्ञ कलयुग दिस इज ऑल्सो सेक्रीफाइस 
and uh, when the rain was there you know the the, the maharaj he knew that you no know, everybody will come now they know that we are doing this he didn't wanted any fame he just left the country and went somewhere else <laughs> he is so humble uh, so yes in kaliyuga this hari naam sankirtan is also there there are so many other stories uh, his always Badri Narayan Maharaj, just a minute, I'll complete. His Holiness Badri Narayan Swami Maharaj was speaking that in one country there was a temple, in a building there was a temple and it was haunted by ghosts actually. And, uh, and it was like there are so many things happening, you know, Maharaj was telling the Pujari then with somebody else and all the Brahmacharis are fighting and so many different things were going on. Uh, it was not peaceful. So he said then, the leader of the let's start Harinam Sankirtan. The leader said to everybody, and when the Kirtan was there, then everything slowly, you know, settled down. Yes, Mata, you can speak now. Yeah. I was saying. You can take that. Yeah. Um, um, I think uh, Ravi Ravi Shankar um, Prabhu, right? Ah, um, uh, Art came, of living. Yeah. Ha, Art of living. Ah. He came to New York. Uh, for a week of, uh, um, I think, that program. And during that whole week, there was no um, violence uh, in New York. Otherwise, the mm. police was always busy with a lot of, like, uh, uh, in the city. But then nice. it was noted that for that whole week, the city was so calm, so peaceful. So everybody was amazed to see the results around. And it came down to that because that art of living and that session was happening for that whole week. So it was uh, kind of just spreading the positivity nice. around. So third is E, exemplary karma yogis. Uh, so why do we need exemplary karma yogis? So Krishna is telling before this about nishkam karma. So although there are a lot of people who don't need to work, but still they have to work. Krishna is telling Arjuna, although you don't have to work, you are surrendering everything to me, but still you should work. Why? To set an example. And Krishna also gives examples of like Janak Maharaj. And he himself, Krishna, although he is Lord himself, he doesn't have to do anything. But still, through himself, he is giving this example. Krishna explained so far that if one has desires, then he may work with desire in a religious way. Now, he will explain that even if one has no desire, he should still work to set example for others. You know, it is easy to work when you have desire. I want to achieve this, then you will work so hard for it. But if you have no desire, why would you work? So Krishna is telling, no, he should still work. Why? To set example. And example is very, very important. You know, you know although uh, there are so many big, big people in big positions, they don't, don't really need to work so much. But they set an example. Why do they set an example? So that common people can follow. Yad yad achrati shreshta statta devita rojana sayat pramanam kurute um, What is that? Sayat pramanam kurute tad anu vartate So they, they actually work so that they can set example for the common people to follow. Um, just like you have prime minister of the country, you know. So he's setting an example. So in so many religious ways, he's a religious prime minister, then everybody is following, everybody is so inspired. So many other people don't need to really do all those things, but he's doing it so that everyone can follow to set an example. <clears throat> self-realized person has no duty. So someone is self-realized self in the in the Bhagavad Gita, many times Krishna says a self-realized person makes no difference between a piece of stone and gold. Now there, he thinks they are the same. But why does he still work? He has no duty. Still works to set an example. But for one who takes pleasure in the self, Atma Rati, who is satisfied in the self, Atma Tripta, fully satisfied in himself alone, there is no obligation to do any prescribed action, no taste for material pleasure, no purpose or gain in performing such actions, no reason for not performing such work too, no need to depend on any other living being or demigod. So self-realized per person is satisfied because of his connection with the Lord. Brahma Bhuta Prasanna Atma Na Shochati Na Kaangshati Sama Sarveshu Bhuteshu Mat Bhakti Labhate Param Brahma Bhuta Prasanna Atma So that self-realized person is Prasanna always because he is uh, 
he is always engaged in Brahma, in the Supreme Lord. Na shochati na kanshati. He is not thinking what happened in the past. He is not thinking what will happen in the future. Na shochati na kanshati. He is not lamenting, not desiring. Sama sarveshu bhuteshu. He treats all the living entities equally. Mad bhakti labate param. That person only can do my devotional service, my dear Arjuna. So Lord Krishna is saying this. One who has spiritual intelligence doesn't perform prescribed actions with desires, but does them without attachment to results to set the right example. So we have already discussed this. So he's giving the example of King Janaka. So, you know, many times we understand things by example, right? And that is one of the uh, most important things. So, if you, if you hear from somebody, then you may get some information. But when you see someone behaving in that way, acting in that way, then instead of information, it will bring about transformation in you. Right? When you see the example. That's a most of our textbooks, you know, when they explain, say, trigonometry, they say, okay, this is 90 degree, this is uh, obtuse angle, acute angle, but then they have some examples. Then you can better understand that. So examples are very important. So when we, and that is why the association of devotees is very important. That all the devotees are setting example for each other so that we can see and we can get inspired. So this is the verse I was speaking. Yad yad achrati sheshtas tatta deve tarojana sayat pramanam kurute lokas lokas tadanu vartate. Common men follow a great person. So example of Janak Maharaj is there. He, Janak Maharaj is the father of Sita Devi. And... Uh, he gave uh, Mother Sita to Lord Ram. So this example is there. And when in the Ramayana, when uh, Lord Ram was banished to the forest, you know, then Lord Ram said that, no, no, Sita, you can stay there. Then Mother Sita said, no, I don't want to prove my father to be wrong. When my father married me, uh, married and gave me to you, he said that you should stay with Ram in both good times and the bad times. It is easy to stay in good times and difficult to stay in bad times. If I do not come with you, I'll prove my father to be a liar. So I should therefore come with you. Even Krishna is engaged in work. Krishna doesn't have to do anything. So somebody asked Prabhupada, can Krishna create a stone which he cannot lift? Then Prabhupada said, yes, Krishna can create a stone which he cannot lift. It will be very heavy. But then after that he will lift it. <laughs> so Krishna doesn't have to do anything. But still he is engaging in work. Because if he doesn't engage in work, you will say, Oh, Krishna is not doing work, I will also not do work. <coughs> right? I will also relax. Just like in a company where there is a company culture, organization. If the boss is always going out, you know, smoking BD, cigarette, whatever, and just uh, chewing tobacco and just talking to everybody whole time, you will also think, okay, I should not work. No, I've seen this. This is people take, take that example. And if the manager is like very serious, serious, sincerely working, all the team under him or her, they will work very nicely. So Krishna is the leader. So Krishna is saying, all men will certainly follow my path. All these worlds will be put to ruination. I would be the cause of creating unwanted population. I would thereby destroy the peace of all living beings. It's time 7.45. Okay. So act without attachment to set example. Don't disturb the ignorant. So there are a lot of ignorant people who will not understand this. So Krishna is saying, do not disturb them. It will be explained. It will be explained here. Uh, so there are four kinds of people. There are there is a lazy intelligent. There is lazy fool and then there is what is that lazy intelligent lazy fool uh, and then s s smart intelligent smart fool so basically the smart fool he will always work and he will do something wrong lazy intelligent is the highest class where like he doesn't want to work but he will tell others how to work and he will be very intelligent but somebody who's a fool, if he's not working, that is good. But if a foolish person starts working, then he will, <laughs> he, 
he will make things worse right for example if i ask to put a projector to a uh, you know working fool then he will actually spoil it in such a way that i cannot use it for the next time also so ignorant persons uh, thinks himself the doer you know they always all they do, don't know, don't know anything they, they think that okay i can do a lot of things prakrite krinya marani gunais karmani sarvasha ahankara vimulatma karta ahamiti mannate so they are so puffed up they think that i am doing everything they will fight with everybody they will say i am the i am the doer of everything and uh, they will have a lot of ego ahankar like ravan right so you know what ravan did, did. so that is the reason uh so having described about uh, karma yoga krishna will now mention that ultimately he is the object of it and every activity needs to be done as an offering to him such karma yoga is actually called bhakti yoga so wherever krishna is involved that becomes bhakti so krishna is saying do your duty depending on me mai sarvani karmani sanyasa adhyatma chetsa nirashir nirmamo bhutva yudyasv vigata jurah so Uh, krishna is telling do your duties depending sanyasa adhyatma chesha with the consciousness of detachment you should do this nirasar nirmamo bhutva without any envy without any attachment you should do this and what will happen if you follow the teachings if you work for with uh, detachment and for krishna then you will be muchyante te api karma bhi then you will be released liberated from any type of karma results of disregarding sarva gyan vimulastan vidhi nashtan achetsa then there will be destruction uh will a person who is aware of the punishments for sinful actions be afraid of committing them not necessarily so what does this mean that if a person is committing sinful actions will he be afraid of committing them even such people are impelled to act sinfully due to strong past habits and impressions what then to speak of one who is unaware of the punishment so many times you know it is seen that people kill somebody and they say oh i was i didn't know what i was doing so they are so much impelled by anger or any other you know lust or whatever it is that they do not understand what they are doing so uh, krishna will explain about that about this conditioning how that happens so so before before we answer that in the uh, fourth it will be answered here enemy of the soul uh, krishna is also explaining that one should work according to one's own nature so there are different kind of duties for everybody krishna is saying don't imitate others duty so suppose you are good at say you know uh, arts or science or whatever then you should probably pursue that passion wherever your passion is and not just do something else just for the sake of doing it but nowadays even chemical engineering students are going into software engineering and even though people don't like like i met my neighbor and in the evening we were talking and uh, i asked him what are you working on he said i work on hardware programming you know some language he mentioned and he said i i don't like it at all i'm just doing it <laughs> and he was saying i wish i would get laid off i told him that my company is laying off he said oh that's very good i don't like my work i wish my company also lays me off so yeah so people are working on something which they don't even like <laughs> so ha huh? yeah they are getting the paycheck but they don't like what they do right just for getting the paycheck they are doing but imagine if they work in something which they like then how how nice because you are spending like 90000 hours of your life like working 40 years in something which you don't like but in general the work is not in everything yeah so krishna is saying do your duty don't imitate others and then the last part that question will be answered here why people are impelled to do something which they do not want to do 
So that is the enemy of the soul. So what was T? Yes, you remember? Tyag. Tyag, renunciation or work, right? R, rungs of the yoga letter E. Exemplary, yeah, example. And this is the enemy of the soul. So, <clears throat> Arjuna asked about Jiva's attachment to the sense objects even though it is forbidden by scripture. So people do so many things which forget about scripture according to law also, you know, in the society they are wrong, incorrect. So, so let's see what are those. This is the question, Atha kena prayukto ayam papam charati purusha anikchan api varshneya balad iva niyojita. Without iksha, without anyone's desire, people are st still doing such activities as if somebody is forcing them to do balad. So now Krishna is asked, telling the answer, Shri Bhagavan Vacha. Krishna is Bhagavan. Lust causes material entanglement. So Krishna is answering, Kama Esha Krodh Esha. Kama means lust, Krodh means anger. Rajo Guna Samud Bhava. So all these are like passionate, Rajo Guna Samud Bhava. Maha Shano Maha Papam. Vidhi Enam Iha Vairi Nam. So lust and anger are actually the main causes for all these sins. And then uh, Krishna also describes the three, three degrees of covering of lust. So when we are talking about lust, it can mean something to which someone is attached too much, you know. Um, so the three degrees of covering, so you can see in the nice picture, so one is like uh, smoke is coming from fire, right? So, but still fire is there, so uh, that kind of lust uh, is, I mean attachment is less, the fire and smoke are little separate, you can see both the fire and smoke, so that is in human beings. And then you have in the trees, so in the trees you can see, and then in the womb, the womb is there and the baby is there. So there are three different examples given here, uh, for trees, for human beings, and for animals. And the entanglement is less in human beings, much less in, tre less in trees and the least in animals. So for human beings, therefore, it is easy to get out of this lust. But it is difficult for other species. Therefore, it is said that human life is very rare and very precious. What is the quality of something that is rare? What is the quality? Suppose on the Pacific beach right now we have sand. Instead of sand you have all the diamonds. Then the value of diamonds will be very less. Nobody will ask. You probably have to pay for buying some sand. So the quality of something that is rare is that it is very precious. Diamonds are rare. Gold is rare. Similarly this human life is also rare. It means it is very precious. And we should utilize it for the right purpose, for the right uh, goal, right, which is spiritual self-realization. So lust is never satisfied. We may think that we are putting, like when there is fire in the Havan Kund, we put some ghee there, right? And we think that, oh, when as soon as we put ghee, we think that the fire has subdued. For a moment we see like that, right? But actually what happens, that ghee has actually ignited the fire more. So lust is like that. We think we may gratify our senses with doing something, we will be relaxed. But what happens? Again we want more and more and more. So that's a beautiful example. Lust is never satisfied. Three locations of lust. What are the three? Where does lust sit? Krishna tells. Indriya ani mano buddhir. Indriya ani means senses. Buddhi means intelligence. And mano means the mind. So how can you purify these by Krishna consciousness is Indriyani, all these senses, taste. How can we purify a taste? By eating prasadam. There is a restaurant in Dallas, a Govinda's restaurant where a lot of uh, people who are not devotees, you know, mostly Americans, they come to eat. And just by eating prasadam, they have become devotees. They have purified, they have given up eating um, abominable things. You know, it purified their senses. 
purifying the intelligence by reading the scriptures understanding the scriptures there are different uh, arguments debates in the scriptures how, what to do in which situation so basically it sharpens the intelligence and how to purify the mind mind is always thinking i should do this should i do this i like this i don't like this how to purify the mind mind can be purified by mantra by chanting of the uh, mantra krishna's name hare krishna mantra or and instead of having false ego having true ego so so first level is senses stronger than senses the mind above that is intelligence and then this false ego false ego is like i am this body i am software engineer i am this i am that suppose you are having a dream and in the dream you see a tiger chasing you and immediately you get up and you are actually feeling that i was there and the tiger was chasing me that is false ego right because at that time the false ego is active in sleep but in deep sleep suchupti stage that is not there in deep sleep you don't even get dreams you know there are different stage jagrat uh, uh, jagrat avastha is there swapna suchupti and taroi that is the highest transcendental stage so true ego is i am the servant of krishna and when you have the true ego then the mind and intelligence and senses all are servants of the true ego then everyone will follow the true ego suppose you think i am a king then you will act like a king your mind intelligence your thoughts your walk everything follow will follow that right so when we are thinking we are the servant of krishna then our mind intelligence will also follow those things just two minutes so krishna says how to conquer this lust is by first regulating the senses so everything is starting from input is coming from the senses so one should not try to conquer over the mind and intelligence first that is the wrong thing so they are more powerful than the senses so start with senses right so as we can see this series is there and study the mind by deliberate spiritual intelligence krishna consciousness so yeah this is a very uh, important concept so how we can uh, conquer lust study the mind and the whole connection between the senses mind intelligence and soul so we'll end here thank you very much hare krishna lila prabhupad ki jai if any comments is probably i just want to give you an example of example yeah, yeah give my just one and uh, when prabhupada met uh, uh, the, the beatles he put an extra effort to convince them and to make them devotees because prabhupada knew that if they become devotees they were set in a good example yeah. others will have to follow more easily you know yes yes prabhu very nice example is yes, prabhu this prabhu you want to speak something anyone else any points you liked maybe just share one point what's the distinction between mind and intelligence the mind cannot analyze mind will just react instantly you know impulsively but intelligence will analyze discriminate and uh, do analytics on that and then it will give the results but both are sources of uh, lust yeah it says krishna says yes these are three places in the previous slide three locations of lust indriyani senses mano mind and buddhir so sometimes intelligence also can uh, fool us into so many different ways you know so people who commit sinful activities they they have a justification their intelligence will justify why it is correct right for example hitler you know he thought that one of the races on this planet earth is unwanted so let us finish this so his intelligence was actually he was very convinced with that right <laughs> even terrorists are like that yeah all of us are after exactly yeah so that intelligence is also corrupted so krishna is giving the answer how to study the mind the mind can be studied by 
spiritual intelligence and intelligence can be spiritualized by understanding a true ego that I am the servant of the Lord. That is my constitutional position. Not thinking that, you know, I am the doer and I am everything. I am the body. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, Srivatsa Prabhu, you want to speak something? What, what point you like? Uh, not that, but I actually had a question when you mentioned Nishkarma Yoga. Uh, yeah. What does that entail? Does that entail your day-to-day -day activities or does that more entail to the devotional activities you do for Krishna? Because yeah. when you talk about, like, let's say, work, right? There's always, we work towards a project deadline or there's always something at, at the end of the line that we work towards. So how can, at that time, how can you truly disconnect? So I wasn't able to understand that portion, Prabhu. Yeah. So even work, it can be made Nishkam Karma Yoga because uh, when we are working, then whatever are the results from working, for example, you work eight hours in the office and whatever salary you are drawing from that, uh, you are actually maybe using it to in so many different ways like making food, offering it to the Lord or coming to the temple. So the result of your work is actually engaged in devotional activities, mm -hmm. right? So even Arjuna is a Kshatriya to give that example. And Krishna is saying, uh, what is that verse? Krishna is saying that Ma Manusmara Yuddhacha, you know. He's saying, Arjuna, you fight, you do your duties, and then you remember me. So while you are working, you do your work very nicely. Whatever is your duty, you are a Kshatriya, you are a software engineer, you do your job, and just remember me, Ma Manusmara, and keep remembering me, and then uh, I will take care of you. That, that's the perfection of your duty. So while you are working, yes, we have to work nicely to set a nice example. Because if you work nicely, then you can set an example. Then people will ask you how, how you are so focused, how you are so uh, honest, you have so much integrity. Then you can tell because I have this knowledge. You know, then basically you can, you can be an example. Where, like a Nishkam Karmi Yogi, you don't have to really work, but you are setting an example. So yes, any work can be uh, Krishnaized, you know, it can be purified by bringing Krishna in the center. So, yeah. But we should not be attached. If Krishna has to give up, keep our job, we will keep it. If we have to take away, we will take away. We have to do our best. So, we don't have to worry too much about it. Yes. Tapasro, please speak something. Any point you liked. <laughs> Anything you okay. like, just speak one point. Okay, you said that, um, uh, like, uh, we should, um, someone can argue like this, okay, Krishna says to work, do your dharma, so somebody, like, traditionally in India, in uh, Indian countries, in the tradition is that the parent teaches something to the child, the child carries on that. My, ask anybody in Western country, you, do, you have heard Gita, people will say, okay, I don't know. But in India, you ask anybody, what you do you hear about Gita? Okay, I, I know what, what is Gita, I don't need to read it. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. That's a common <laughs> sentence everybody uses in India. So someone may argue, okay, uh, my dharma, what my parents taught me to do this, so I'm doing that. So Krishna is also telling that the same thing, do your dharma. So I'm also doing my dharma, why you are saying that why did you read Bhagavad Gita for that? Hmm. Yeah, but they, they, they don't uh, understand it fully. They are just doing their duty or karma without Krishna. It's like all zeros without one. So, like, like in the beginning I said, karmi puja, you have to do worship. Okay, you are doing karma, but what is happening? You are getting so much entangled in that work that the end of life you are asking, there was a one businessman who was a, like a tire, you know, uh, trader. He used to sell tires. At the deathbed, he is saying, tire ka bhao kya hai abhi? What is the rate of tire right now? <laughs> that is his consciousness. So is that karma? It's not karma. Because throughout the life, you have just done one thing without understanding what is the purpose of life. Because job 
or business is just a means to live you know to livelihood to take care of your body and have shelter it's not the goal it's just the means you know just like in job people identify themselves oh i have been with this company for 10 years 20 years i i am this company i am and then immediately they are laid off they get depressed they are in anxiety they are suicidal because they try to identify themselves with that thing but they do not understand that it is just a means of livelihood so yes karma is a means but it is not the goal the goal is krishna the goal is spiritual realization that is the goal of human life right so uh, so yeah that is so, that is so full you, understanding of karma so you explain the akarma right so you said there is a nishkam karma shakam karma nishkam karma and akarma so what is the symptoms by person who is in the akarma akarma yeah. akarma is like devotional service but uh, what are the symptoms of a person like i may be working um, out of 24 hours i am a computer engineer so i may be doing coding for 8 hours daily and my coding is i'm making the mobile phone so whatever research i am doing whatever the coding i am doing that being used by millions of devices billions of devices all over the world and then those devices are used for the uh, terrorist activity also some of the devices somebody is using yeah, yeah. exactly so i'm also getting the reactions so what is akarma for me then yeah that is why to purify our income whatever we doing because people may misuse that to purify our income in that way i mean directly we are not doing that but unknowingly people will do it if directly you are engaged in that you know then you should not do that work right but indirectly if people are doing it then to purify that uh, lakshmi we have to engage in the service of krishna somehow or the other then it will become purified yeah yeah other thing in this chapter also krishna mentions that whatever you eat then you offer to me otherwise uh, there will be sin right if you eat without offering to the lord there would be sin that would be there mucchante sarva kilbisha so similarly if we do not offer the results of our work to krishna then there would be sin basically so we have to because see right now we are breathing seeing so many things so many demigods so many people are involved under the direction of the lord so if we do not are not grateful to them then basically you know it's uh, it is said that is stay stena stena means thief those people are so we are coming we are serving in the temple to the lord then i think everything is okay so there shouldn't be any problem so yeah thank you okay we can take prashad